Metro Get Up. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. We're kicking this off with something very different today. I'm here with my good friend Jay and <laughs> Mrs. RG right on cue. And we are heading to Crep City here at the NEC Birmingham. So basically it's a convention for sneakerheads like myself. I've never been to anything like this before, so I don't know what to expect. But from what I have seen, it's basically a market filled with rare, exotic and probably expensive trainers and other clothing and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited, a little bit nervous for my bank account, but let's go and check it out. Well, I mean, my first thought is it's so much more chilled. I'm so used to toy fairs and game fairs where it's like everyone mad rush, going crazy, fighting, you know, you can't get around. Whereas it looks a lot more spacious, a lot more relaxed, a lot more enjoyable, which is a good thing. So yeah, let's go and spend some money. How you doing, bro? I'm right, man, you? I'm all good, man. What have you got on the... Uh... I'll play. Yeah. What you got on them, mate? He's a UK 7. Fire. You know how many raffles I entered for these? Hey bro, you've been a waste of my time. If I tell you a story, you won them for retail and then grab them because you didn't like it. Nah, nah. <laughs> put him on camera. Put him on camera. <laughs> This guy threw away a lottery yeah, ticket. Remember that Keenan and Kel episode where he lost the ticket? <laughs> <laughs> So we've done one lap, got myself a pair of trainers, complimentary Red Bull. Thought, you know what, on the retro ghetto, I'm gonna do some gaming, set a top score. Three pound to go. It's everything here designed to take money off you. Lap two, let's go.
in and welcome officially to this week's Ghetto Vlog. So it's been a few days now since the Crepe City Birmingham event. Really enjoyed it. Like I said, the footage, didn't know what to expect. Never really been to a convention outside of video games and toys before. And it was a real breath of fresh air. Whilst it probably wasn't as big as I imagined it would be. Very well organised, you know, it was very spacious, you get two free drinks vouchers upon entry, you can choose from alcohol or soft drinks, there was a DJ there, just good vibes man, real nice atmosphere, people walking around complimenting each other's footwear, and uh, yeah, I didn't anticipate buying two pairs of trainers, but whilst I wouldn't necessarily say it was fraught with bargains, I managed to sniff out a couple of bargains, you know me guys, right, and uh, yeah, there was some heavy bartering, uh, yeah, I was able to add a couple of nice pieces to my trainer collection, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. It's probably my most requested uh, video or collection that I haven't yet shown on this channel. Somewhat my hidden collection, right? I get asked all the time, can you show your trainers? Can you show your trainers? And, you know, I'm not very subtle, am I, when it comes to filming them? <laughs> when we go on game hunts and stuff, just because it's something I love, right? Uh, it's probably the... It's probably around a parallel to some extent with video games and I've loved them my whole life. My whole life I've loved video games and my whole life I've loved trainers. It's just, yeah, probably the two most constants when it comes to my collecting. Um, so yeah, I thought now was a good time to show my collection. Don't worry, we are going to be getting back to the usual video game goodness. I've got CX Lotteries, amazing stuff to unbox and we might throw in another game hunt as well. But yeah, like I say, I figured this was a good time to take a look at my trainer collection. I'm not going to show everything. This is just primarily my Nike Air Max collection. This is my sort of real focus uh, when it comes to collecting and uh, as I say I picked up a couple more pairs today as well so it just makes sense to show these to you guys now. Also I just wanted to see what it would look like to throw my collection in the 3.0. Uh, obviously they won't be staying here we don't have room to display them or anything but yeah I just wanted to combine my two collecting passions just to have a look at it right just to live with it for a couple of days and <laughs> enjoy the uh, coming together of both worlds of collecting. I'm going to real quickly just fly through. As I say, these are just my Air Max collection. Uh, I'm not going to take long over these. These first pair, Air Max 90s. I'm not a huge 90s fan. The vast majority of these are Air Max 1s, but I bought these because these are the 30th anniversary. So you see this one's 1990, this one's 2020. Just like a real nice sort of off-white colour. Um, and then we get into the Air Max 1s. This is quite a special pair. These are called Air Max 1 Patch. So these actually come with different Velcro, Velcro like strips that you can put on the front and the back. They've got like different countries, different cities, different variations of the Nike logo and stuff. You can stick on them. Love this pair, but they're like corduroy. And I've seen what happens to these when you wear them. So it's one of them weird things where, yeah, I don't know when the right occasion to wear these is. I'm not going to bust them out to Audi anytime soon, but yeah, happy to have them nonetheless. And then my second pair of Air Max 90s. Yeah, it's just the colorway. It's the colorway that pulled me in. Uh, these are a holiday uh, trainer more so than anything. And then, you know, just more pairs of Air Max 1s. A lot of these you will have seen regularly. Um, me wearing out and about when game hunting. Now, this is a new pair. So this is one that I picked up at Crep City. These, I believe, are Air Max 1 Anniversary uh, Royal Blue. And this was a, just a colorway that I'd never owned before. And... Um, yeah, a, a colorway that I've been wanting for quite some time. I got an absolute bargain. So the two pairs of trainers I bought today, I saw both of those pairs of trainers priced higher than the total price I bought two pairs for. So yeah, definitely got some bargains whilst I was there. And these are a 2017 release, I think. So, uh, you know, nice to get um, a box fresh pair in 2024. These are recent additions. These were quite hard to find. Uh, yeah, these are my go-tos, right? These just get put on my feet all the time. This is a very special pair. This is a Nike ID pair. So I made these myself. These have actually got my son's name, RG Jr., embroidered on the back. And I just wanted something that was sort of in the sand and sort of khaki green territory. Real, I was thinking about like Carhartt vibes. They're kind of like classic colors. I was gonna get a Carhartt badge um tailored onto the tongs just not something i ever got around to but yeah um always wanted to design my own pair and quite happy with how they turned out and then yeah just you know more pairs that you've seen regularly on the channel and then we get to this section here so for me this is the goat trainer i, I think this is the greatest trainer I ever made and as you can see these have had a lot of wear these i bought these in 2017 and that's the thing guys right this isn't 
I don't buy two pairs of trainers in one day on a regular basis, right? I'm not rich or anything like that. This is years of love and um, looking after my trainers. And when you have a lot of pairs of trainers, you get a rotation, right? So trainers do last a lot longer. So yeah, some of these trainers in here are like up to eight years old. Um, and yeah, it shows with some of these. You can see the front's coming off. I bought these prior to an IB for holiday uh, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, just love that colorway. And this is like a breathable version of that shoe. Um, this is another one that I like to take on holiday with me, just like, you know, airport trainer. And that takes me to my second and final purchase from Crep City. Had to do it, guys. Had to do it. I bought myself a box fresh, brand new pair of these. Like I say, these have seen better days now. Um, and with it being my favorite trainer of all time, I just wanted to have a nice fresh pair as well. So yeah, very, very happy uh, with the day itself. And to come back with a couple of pairs that I've been after for a long time is, yeah, just a bonus. So I hope some of you at least enjoyed looking at that and seeing the footage from Crep City. But now let's get back to what we do on a regular basis here at the Retro Ghetto. Let's get into some video game goodness. And we're going to kick this off with a CEX Lottery. Okay, so CEX Lottery time. Uh, this is something that I alluded to on Wednesday's video. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do so. I had a real good time. We just went on like a local game hunt, but yeah, it went better than I could have imagined. And yeah, I really enjoyed that video. I felt like it came together quite well. So yeah, check that if you haven't already. Um, but on that, I sort of announced that I'm going for the full Street Fighter PlayStation 1 set. There's quite a few and some of them are very expensive. Um, so I have one of those in here. There was only one copy of this in stock uh, when I ordered it. So I don't think there's any more in the network any longer. And this is a genuine CEX lottery. So for reasons we'll get into shortly. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not, look at that. That's not the best start. That's not a good omen. Right? I've ripped the whole box. <laughs> that's never happened to me before. Um, yeah, all these years later, you'd think I'd be better at this. Cut, let's, let's retake. Look at that, first time. <laughs> right, okay, so let's hope. There's no invoice or anything, so we ain't got to worry about that. Let's just get straight into it. Rap, 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 rap. That game is, ha <laughs> Street Fighter Collection. Yeah, so this is the original Street Fighter collection, released I believe in 1997. This one contains Super Street Fighter 2, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and Street Fighter Alpha 2 Dash. So I believe the first two are the Super Nintendo variants, and then you've got Street Fighter Alpha 2 Dash, uh, which I don't know much about. There's so many different variants to Street Fighter games, I don't know if I've ever played Alpha 2 Dash. I'm a big fan of the Alpha series, I do enjoy Alpha 2. Um, so yeah, uh, delighted with that. And the reason I may have seemed so happy, the lottery's already won. Unless this disc looked like someone's been ice skating on it. My concern was it was going to come as the value series, but it hasn't. And I finally got ourselves a nice, proper, black label Street Fighter game. Look at that artwork. Absolutely stunning. Um, and this is considerably more expensive than this one. So this one we got from Ilkerson on Wednesday's video. This unfortunately is the value series. I'm gonna try and swap this over at some point. Uh, but this was 20 pounds. This says 55, I don't remember it being that expensive. It was vouchers, I paid for both of these with the vouchers. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so you say considerably more expensive because it's a better collection, right? With it having Alpha 2 Dash on here. Now, I think this can also come as a value series. I may be wrong, um, but yeah, either way, delighted to have this version. And it's actually over two discs as well. I think that'll be because of Alpha, right? Because the other, because the collection volume two is one disc, but that's just three variations of Street Fighter Two. And I actually played it last night, and the load times are very slow. Um, I was very surprised as to how long the load times are. This is where people usually jump in the comment section and tell me I should be buying these on the Sega Saturn, and then the better version. I know, right? <laughs> I've no nostalgia for the Saturn, and. Um, yeah, I don't need to collect anything else for that, guys. So let me just be happy with my PlayStation version, right? Um, so yeah, absolutely delighted with that. It's all it's all complete. It's the black label version that I wanted. And like I said, this is one that is increasing in price massively. So but yeah, great to have both Street Fighter collections now for the PS1 set. Um, hopefully we can get the proper sleeve variant of the uh, collection volume two. But yeah, that is definitely a CEX lottery win. Really happy with that. Okay, so... 
Uh, next time you see me, I might be on some sort of a game hunt. <laughs>Litchfield, and to be honest, a bit of a bust, not much happening at all in the charity shops. You know, you have them days where not only do you not find anything, but the people you encounter along the way aren't particularly friendly. I had a few people in charity shops that I asked if they had games and things, and very sort of like, let's just say, short with their replies. Um, a few no's. And uh, yeah, a few people that put out that I'd even asked them. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be in a rush to come and hunt the charity shops of Litchfield again. Um, it's a shame because they've got a decent CX and a lovely coffee shop. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we're going to continue on this journey. It is next up, I believe, uh, when you're in this part of the world, you might as well go to Tamworth. So it's Tamworth CX, another place I've had mixed success. Once upon a time, I had probably my favourite ever... Um, selection of games in Tamworth so if we can replicate that again today that will certainly rescue this hunt um, so yeah I'll see you when we get there you right there mate <laughs> come on we've got more CX hunting to do yet <laughs> <laughs>
whilst he's tempting. Where would I put it though? I don't know where I'd put it. But I know I want it. Okay, it's just got a bit grey here in Tamworth. The rain is coming, but let me tell you, my spirits have never been brighter. Absolutely buzzing. So that one charity shop has turned this hunt from a negative to an absolute positive. I went in, nothing really much happening. I said, you got any games? Went out in the back and he said those fable words that you want to hear. Oh, just old stuff. <laughs> Loads of uh, retro games and he wanted just one pound each. I've not even really checked them, I ain't looked through them, I just said, yeah, I'll take them all. So they're in my bag, there's some real good stuff in there. Um, yeah, man, delighted with that. Little man's going to have a run around on the park now, and then we're going to get back and take a look at everything I picked up. Let's go. Okay, so back from what ended up being a very successful game hunt. Uh, like I said, there wasn't much happening in Litchfield at all. I did trade in a couple of bits to the Litchfield CEX. So it wasn't an entire waste of time. However, didn't pick anything up. Uh, but that was quickly about to change when we went to Tamworth. So, first stop was, of course, CEX. And I had a few vouchers, right? So... I did want to buy something and I was looking around and there wasn't really anything pulling me in initially and a lot of the good stuff is behind the counter. It's one of them ones where pretty much all the retro, most sort of steel books and things like that are behind the counter so it's that awkward thing, especially for an old man with bad eyes like me where you're kind of leaning over the counter whilst the staff there trying to work and it's never the best setup. But there was a couple of things that caught my eye and the first one that I picked up was uh, PlayStation 2 is the Godfather, but this is the limited edition two disc set with the steelbook. This is a 2006 action adventure game developed by EA Redwood, and of course, it's based on the 1972 movie. Uh, the game follows a non canon character by the name of Aldo Trapani as he, he rises up the ranks of the Corleone family. And guys, you know, uh, when it comes to PlayStation 2, I love cardboard, I love steelbooks. There's not that many really in the vast PS2 library, so. Yeah, definitely uh, one that's been on my hit list for quite some time. And just look at it. I love everything gangster. I love gangster movies. I love the Godfather movies. So this was a must. I actually already owned this in the uh, casket collector's edition, which is a really nice piece. It opens up and it's got like the open casket and the silk and everything inside. But that doesn't come with this steelbook either. So it was nice to have this additionally. And this is a game that I really need to play. I do have this on the Xbox 360. So I would assume that is the better version to play. Um, but such was my enjoyment of coming off the back of playing Mafia 2. I really enjoyed Mafia 2 and that kind of open world GTA style um, game which obviously suits this gangster genre so well. This is similar to how The Godfather plays but there's also other games like Scarface and The Sopranos that are still just sat on my shelves that I've never played. So let me know in the comment section which of those games you would uh, advise jumping into first. But yeah, really happy with this, especially when it's in nice condition. It needs a bit of a clean, but the sleeve cover of the steelbook itself is really nice. And yeah, very, very happy to add that for what was just £12. And sticking with the Tamworth CEX, there was a game that caught my eye. It was a Switch game. Uh, it was £10. Now... 
I do have a saying, right? If you can find a complete in box Super Nintendo game that you don't only own for £10, pick it up. That's kind of been extended to 15 with inflation. Uh, but the same applies to Switch, right? Um, any game that's like that cheap, it's worth taking a look at. And this is just one that I don't think I'd ever seen before. Caught my eye and whilst I was actually in store, I watched a review of it. And the review wasn't damning and it actually sounded half decent. So I picked it up. Anyway, that is American Fugitive. This is a 2019 action adventure game and the easiest way to describe this one would be as a modern early GTA game. We, you know, the GTA and the GTA 2 that we looked at uh, on Wednesday of this week with that isometric view and that similar sort of, you know, rampaging gameplay. Uh, youth players are falsely convicted Will Riley who escapes jail to seek answers for his father's murder. And uh, yeah, like I say, I just figured I couldn't really go too far wrong for £10. It looks like it would be good fun. And sometimes I love going to CEX and picking up a blind buy just because if it does pay off, you don't know, you get that like, sense of achievement, right? That it was you that took the gamble of it. Also, with me having this platform, it's just nice to be able to share these games and share my thoughts of them with you. Uh, not only is it cheap, it's also somewhat uncommon. There's only seven copies of this, I believe, in stock throughout the country. So if this does turn out to be a half-decent game, it might end up being a somewhat uncommon one going forwards. But yeah, definitely one that um, I'll be playing and letting you guys know uh, my thoughts on in due time. And again, let me know if you've played this one in the comments section. And that was it for the Tamworth CEX. But I've got to give a massive shout out to the chap that works at, I think it's called The Works, that like sort of stationery shop directly across from CEX. Little man wanted to go in there, you know, kids love looking at like cheap rubbish, don't they? So he was in there looking and the guy behind the counter was like, I know you, and he watches the channel. So it's uh, it's always strange and um, humbling, the different places that you go where you, people recognize you, people watch the channel and was having a good chat about uh, my PlayStation 3 Essentials journey and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he advised me that there was a pawn shop further down the road that I wasn't aware of because I don't know the town we it too much. So everything that you're now about to see me pick up came as a direct result of that individual. So massive shout out to you, my friend. Uh, so yeah, so I went to that pawn shop. Uh, you saw in the footage, I saw those um, Mortal Kombat uh, busts. Man, I really want that Scorpion one. The first time I saw that was in York when we did the road trip when I went there with Kev and Slime Ass and Bent Legs. Um, it was massively like overpriced though. You could pick that up like £100 now. So it was tempting. Um, as was that Call of Duty Collector's Edition. He actually said I could have that for £12. He'd even knock me some more off. But I've got to think about space, guys, right? I've got to be more and more cautious. If I'm going to have something big, I've got to really want it. So I left, didn't pick up either of those things. But what I did pick up was an Xbox 360 game. And the reason I picked it up was... Firstly, I'm going for all the races on the 360, but also because it was underpriced. This is £8 at CEX, uh, and they had it for just £4.50, and that is Superstars V8 Racing. Released in 2009, this Black Bean Games developed racer is based on the 2008 season of the Italian-based racing series. Uh, I actually didn't know that uh, V8 Racing was an actual uh, motorsport league. I had no idea. Um... I don't really know what to say about it. It's just a racer that I didn't already own. Like I said, I'm going for them all. Again, though, a somewhat uncommon one, I believe. I don't think there's like loads of these in stock at CEX. Um, so, yeah, well worth picking up, especially for underpriced. And there's actually another V8 racing game as well. There's two on the system, so that's one for me to look out for going forwards. But, yeah, that was what I picked up from the pawn shop that was recommended. But, just, I think it was next door, there was a charity shop. And, uh... This is when my look changed. So, I was in this charity shop and there was like a little basket that said games. Quick look in there, nothing special, nothing catching my eye. Which was pretty much the theme of the day. A lot of the charity shops that we'd been in, even if I did find games, they were largely overpriced or sort of like bang on the money to CEX or whatever. Um, and the guy said to me, oh, are you looking for any games in particular? So I sort of explained that, look, man, I collect games, right? I've got issues. <laughs> I collect all games. Uh, I did say to him, have you got anything else in the back? And he said, oh, we've only got old stuff in the back, or worse to that effect. And obviously at that point, right, I thought, well, I want to see what these old games are. He said, yeah, I'm going to have a look. <clears throat> so I went with him, and he just started passing me PlayStation 1 games. Now, that doesn't happen too often anymore in 2024, right? And at this point, I'd seen a couple of games that made me think, yeah, I want these. Uh, and then there's a few other games that I don't even know what they were, don't know the value. Uh, and that's because, you know, my knowledge of the PlayStation 1 library isn't vast. I only know sort of more mainstream stuff. I was never... Uh, a huge PlayStation 1 collector, so it's like a whole new world for me, which I really enjoy. I love learning about systems, and that's sort of how I amass my video game knowledge. I sort of go through different collecting phases and then learn about those systems as and when I focus on them. Um, but yeah, 
just one pound each. He said to me, these are just a pound each. And uh, there were seven in total, so seven quid for all these. And let's go through them all, shall we? So we're going to kick it off with Die Hard Trilogy 2 Viva Las Vegas. Like so many of the PlayStation 1 library, this doesn't show up on the CEX for whatever reason. But on eBay, you're looking at sold listings anywhere from like £10 to £16. Um, this is a year 2000 release. And like its predecessor, it contains three different playable modes. So it's got a third person shooter, it's got a light gun game and a driving game. Um, but unlike the first Die Hard trilogy, this is an original storyline. So it's not just three individual games based on the three individual movies. This one is a playable storyline where the three different gameplay elements just come into play as you progress through the levels. But what I want to say about this is, I don't know how this escaped me as a child. Because me and my brother absolutely loved the original Die Hard trilogy. I think we got it like with our PlayStation. So when we first got the PlayStation, I think that was one of the games we got with it. I don't know if it was a launch title. It might have just been that way in my house. Absolutely loved it. We played it so much. Um, so yeah, somehow as a kid, I was never aware that there was a sequel to that. And it's only in recent times that I've actually learned of this game. Um, looking at the reviews, that may be why. It did get pretty low reviews across the board. But whilst I am doing an all-killer, no-filler PlayStation 1 shelf... I'm not going to turn down the opportunity to pick up sequels uh, for games which I enjoy. So like I said, I've got big nostalgia for the original Die Hard. And I feel like I've got to have the Die Hard Trilogy 2 next to it. A bit like what I did with Alundra, right? So I bought the uh, original game and then felt like I might as well have number two as well. So yeah, um, Die Hard Trilogy 2 will be taking its place on my shelf. And I think that's a decent addition for just one pound. And yeah, just very surprised that I never learned of that one growing up. Uh, the next one we're going to be taking a look at is Tony Hawk's Skateboarding. So I think this is where it all began, right? Um, again, I think this will be going into the collection. I think this is, might be one that I had originally that I traded into CEX. But, you know, it's the start of a huge franchise, isn't it? Uh, this is £8 to purchase this at CEX. Uh, so, yeah, decent find, that one. Uh, another one which randomly isn't on the CEX website. Fantastic game, one that I played growing up. Uh, that is V-Rally. Uh, this is the Platinum Edition of, of V-Rally. But these are definitely more the filler titles now. Um, another one here, look. Ducati World. And this next one, I'd never even heard of. I looked up some gameplay and I'm still not really any of the wiser <laughs> as to what this game is about, man. Uh, Tunnel B1. Uh, so apparently it's a 1996 first person shooter, but yeah, um, doesn't look like any first person shooter I've played before. It almost, I thought it was like some sort of like arcade racer from first person perspective. It's sort of like real fast paced. Uh, strange looking game, uh, another one that doesn't seem to be uh, available at CEX, but I think on eBay, um, yeah, it's just in and around or just under £10, so it's not like a, a particularly rare or sought after game. And now we get to the good stuff. So this is one of the last ones that he picked up out of the bag, and that is uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Uh, it's obviously an absolute classic. Uh, this is the platinum version, I do already own this. It actually came in a copied CD box, but it has got the inlay, it has got the disc in decent condition, and it has got the manual, but coincidentally, I actually have this in nice condition, empty. So I've got the original version on my shelf, but I also have an empty box uh, for Crash Bandicoot 2, so now I've got the disc, I can complete that, uh, and let's say I think it's like a £10 game to buy at CEX, so anytime you can find a Crash Bandicoot game in a charity shop, that's decent, right? And then what was probably, or not probably, definitely my favourite of the bunch and my favourite find of the day uh, is this copy of Dead or Alive. This 1998 Tecmo Fighter is the first of the series and it's quite an expensive game. This is currently £22 at CX. The game's heavily influenced by Virtual Fighter, which came before it. Um, and the game attracted quite a lot of attention for its, uh, let's say, provocative presentation. As you can see from the footage, um, certain movement mechanics have had uh, a lot of time put into them, I think. And this game was actually very highly regarded on its release, not just for those uh, <laughs> upper body movements, but yeah, I think for the gameplay itself. Metacritic gave this an 84 out of 100, IGN gave it an 8.5 out of 10, and uh, what was my old favourite back in the day, computer and video games gave this 5 out of 5 stars. But not only is this a one-on-one -on -one fighter, which I enjoy, not only is it a somewhat expensive game, the reason I was really happy with this one is because this is in one of those official rental cases. Um, and I love these cases. And they're a lot more durable than your standard PlayStation ones, right? Which are always cracked. But these are official Sony, look, like PlayStation release. Really enjoy these. And you see on here it says, 
uh, rental only. And this is actually quite a rare find. There's none currently of these for sale on eBay. I did trawl through the listings and there are two sold listings that both sold for 30 pounds. But from what I remember, it was, that was like a buy it now price. So both are listed at buy it now, both sold for that price. So it could be that if you put this on bidding, it would go for more, I don't know. Like I say, with not being a big PS1 collector, I don't know if there's a huge market uh, for these uh, rental uh, releases, but it would seem so, because it's selling on eBay for more than CX stole the sander copy for. But yeah, really happy to find that. Uh, to find rare retro in a charity shop in 2024 for one pound. Yeah, I mean, I think for the seven pound, I spent what I'd say roughly 75, 80 pounds worth of value potentially to buy these. So yeah, that definitely doesn't happen very much anymore. So absolutely delighted with that, made up uh, with that. And that's what it takes, right? Uh, you go out game hunting, guys, just go everywhere because it only takes one shot, one charity shot, one person to ask you if you like video games or whatever um, to come away with something which sort of makes the trip worthwhile. And, uh, you know, with it being the school holidays as well, it's always great to go out, spend time, father-son bonding, little man, he had a great day. So, yeah, man, uh, happiness all around. And you know what? I think that takes us nicely into Ghetto Gang Game Rooms. Retro Ghetto. It's full of weird and odd stuff that really doesn't matter much anymore, but I love looking at it, love using it. I've got Xbox 360 kiosk, which I picked up out of a random factory in Birmingham. It was an odd buy. We've then got you know, wrestling figures, Zeldas, I've got a bunch of consoles, a bunch of cool figures and collectibles. I've got my goes across to my Mortal Kombat to then my biggest buy I think is my Time Crisis machine which I love could do with a bigger screen but for the price that will do then come across to more of my collectibles I've got a bunch of box playstations and xboxes down there I've got my Hot Toys Ed 209 from Sega Spice Maker that I'm from I've got my well I am a wrestling fan more of the like 90s, 2000s though. Got my Eagle Championship. I've then got my PlayStation collection. Bit of Xbox down the bottom, but I might be getting rid of the, rid of the Xbox One. I'm not really a big fan. Got, as everyone does, display cabinet of games. Of the top games. Made a mistake of buying graded games, which is poor. <laughs> um, bought this recently from Sega Supplies. My Batman. I've got my PlayStation TV, uh, Nomad, Game Gear, you know, the general stuff that everyone has. It's um, a move across to my Xbox 360 collection, which is quite popular at the moment. More toys. Got a Darth Vader Star Wars TV. Street Fighter Edition. A pretty cool DS download station which I got from Vintage Gamer. It's pretty cool. Got um it comes with three DSs. Uh, I've sourced a couple more cards. The first card has got Mario on, uh the Mario demo. It's actually got a play uh, a character, playable character that's not in any of the other games, which I'm quite excited to use when I get around to it. My first ever Gaming experience, Commodore 64, I used to share that with my three brothers. That whole thing there used to be driving me mad. It's literally get up to like four or five hundred on the counter, it crash. I literally bought this yesterday. This is off Vintage Gamer again. Something I always wanted as a kid, but we couldn't really afford it. So I've bought it now. <laughs> Not sure why, but it looks cool. I've got my, my Billy bookcase with my doors to protect them a bit more. I've got my NES collection, SNES, Nintendo 64. It won't go down because it gets dark. It's uh, GameCube, Sega Saturn, Master System. Come across to my box consoles, which I've been picking up. They're quite cool. I do like the Street Fighter ones. That was my first ever big memory of buying a Computer, it was my late mum bought it us, and I remember this just for that. It took me a couple of months to find that box, but Nick found it in the end for me, and it means a lot. It 
out of everything, that's the most thing that I hold on to in this entire game room. Got my Mortal Kombat arcade machine, which I've modded with, I think there's 666 games on there now. Works really well. Got my PS5. Little game watches. My mate did me this yesterday. Little Starbug, which I love. Got um, just a few consoles I play. My hard mod Xbox, which I emulate off a lot. Well, uh, it's, like, it's like my little uh, Stargate. I've got my N64 collection and my Switch underneath. Then I come across to my Star Wars pinball machine and my Call of Duty Juggernaut fridge, which is pretty cool. I picked up my limited one, Shredder's Revenge. And I've got my Mega Drive wall. And I've got my PS3. All these PS4s are sealed because I've got such a massive digital collection. I didn't need to. But in just that's my room. Well, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the video. Absolutely love that. I want to give a massive shout out to Ghetto Gang member James for sharing his fantastic games room with us. And now I want those Mortal Kombat busts even more than I did before. But it's time for me to turn my attention to my own games room because... There's a couple of changes that I want to be implementing in here, but before I can do that, I've got to get tidied up, man. We've got to get these trainers put away and all this mess cleared. Yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so with the room looking at its best, it's time to just have a quick look at some of the changes that I've been implementing. You probably have already noticed I've moved the Super Nintendo sign. Um, it's not been put permanently in place just yet, but the reason I've decided to do this is, well, for a couple of reasons. Uh, firstly, whenever I record, this is where I sit, right? Usually where I film my mainline Wednesday episodes. We've got a camera and lighting up here. And the Super Nintendo sign is always off-center. And it's very annoying. So what happens every week is I take the sign down, put games up in its place. Um, yeah, it just becomes a bit of a hassle. And also, because I'm so happy with how the colour coordinated Super Nintendo walls look in, that just sort of like broke it up a bit. So I'm thinking it can just go there. Um, what we need to do, of course, is get colour coded games here because at the moment these are just any sort of filler games. Look, these don't really belong in the yellow green section. Um, but also, this needs a more permanent way of doing things. The easiest way would be to um, take the games out behind it and have them wedged in slightly with the games either side of it. But I've got so many Super Nintendo games that I just haven't got the space to take those out, so they're just gonna have to sit behind. Uh, so we will figure that out, but we have got to redo the whole Super Nintendo wall shortly anyway. Um, so there's no point in me spending too much time doing that now, because if you look down here, there's a huge overflow of Super Nintendo creeping up. 
Um, so yeah, I've spoke about it on a previous video. We're gonna flip this shelf around at some point and have a second row of spine only facing games running across there and that'll future proof me for quite some time. Um, so yeah, that's something for another day. But in terms of right now, uh, let's get them color coordinated, shall we? And there we go. So with a bit of playing around, added a few more yellow and green games. Um, the SNES wall's now complete. I think that looks better. Just gives it more continuation with that color flow. Um, really happy uh, with how that's looking now. I also um, allowed a game either side of the standy, the stand, the sign, just to protrude a little bit, just so it keeps it tight. This is an original store display Super Nintendo sign. This isn't like a repro one. This is like a 1994 I think it is so yeah something that uh, means a lot to me so I definitely don't want that falling over and breaking during the night because these signs become very brittle over the you know 30 years um so yeah I've got those wedging that in and yeah I think that looks pretty good man so yeah happy with that little change in here there are of course more jobs to do here in the 3.0 including this huge pile of games here so that's going to be one hell of a montage for next week's vlog but it will have to be on next week's vlog because that is going to do it for this week's ghetto vlog. What a stat week it's been. The crep city of Edinburgh, Birmingham seems like a long time ago now. And I want to thank you guys for taking time out on your busy Sunday to watch me and all my game hunting shenanigans. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing. And if you want to support myself and the channel more so going forward, there will be a link below to join the ghetto gang. You get exclusive content, you get access to the Discord. And if you do want to send in your Ghetto Gang Games Room and have it featured here on the channel, that's the way to do so. Also, it's a good time because we're just kicking off with fantasy football ahead of the new season. Uh, the winner gets to choose um, which charity or the proceeds of that go to as well. So yeah, get involved. Link will be below. But yeah, once again, just a massive thank you for you guys taking the time to watch. Play your games. Keep it retro. I'll see you all on Wednesday in a bit. Lock into the retro ghetto. Come and have a look around the ghetto. We got Sonic and Staples set.